Hello, thank you again for joining me. In the studio with me today is Scott Fearing, the Executive Director of Rochester Pride, uh, Michael Lill, Chair of Rochester Pride 2014, and Christopher Henley, the Co-Chair. Thank you so much for coming into the studio. It's really great to be here. Thank you for having us. We love to be here. <laughs> <laughs> I should say welcome back because you yes. were here last year, too. Yes. Yeah. No good deed goes unpunished. They brought us back. Hey, that's right. <laughs> Surprised that we were invited back. <laughs> but see, I didn't have the honor last year to interview you. Now yeah. it's my The other turn. guy's in therapy. <laughs> <laughs> I was wondering why you said no. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Okay, so let's talk about it. It is um, Rochester Pride 2014 Unmask Your True Colors. And this is a huge event. How many years has this event been taking place? Well, through uh, throughout the history of Rochester, uh, Pride has been going on. The picnic itself for about 43 years. Wow. Uh, the festival somewhere in the 20s. And the I think this is the 24th parade, if I'm not 25th. mistaken. 25th, 25th parade. Yeah, yeah, wow. Great. So many years. That's cool. Yeah. That's it's, cool. It's a say. really it's wonderful been. opportunity for us to, to continue to talk about LGBTQ issues yeah. with the public and, and to show our supporters that we're there and involved and uh, get them involved with us. And Rochester's wonderful when it comes to that. Yes, absolutely. We have a great turnout every year. Yeah, yep. yeah. Oh, gosh, it is a party. <laughs> but it's not only like a party, you know, let's just, um, you know, drink. Um, right, but right. <laughs> right. We don't want that's a small that. element. <laughs> but there, oh. there's some family aspects to this as well. Absolutely. I mean, we, you know, one of the big things about uh, the, the Pride events, you know, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, is a true sense of community. And mm-hmm. that your community is diverse. The community comes from all over the place, from all different economic uh, vantage points in the world. In fact, uh, our festival from 12, th- 12 o'clock to 3.30 is free, family free and fun. And uh, we, did, we started that last year because we really want people that also cannot afford to come to be able to come. And during those hours, we also programmed the Mambo Kings. They'll be coming to play. Cool. So we've really tried to make step up our focus to make sure that we reach the entire community and when we consider that probably, well, at least 30% of the people that attend these events are uh, straight ally friends. And so our whole community, we try to represent, but also invite everybody else to have a great time with us. And I would say along the parade route, the numbers actually shoot up from 30%. I think that uh, well over half the people uh, lining the parade route, watching, cheering, having fun, looking at the fabulous floats and marchers and, and music and dancers and such, um, are, are a lot of them are our allies. And one of the fun things at the family event is our Zumba. We started that last year, got the kids moving. Everybody had a really great time. Yeah. It was a real big highlight. Is that like an exercise event? I don't know what that would look like. No, just dancing and fun. No. Look at that body. I can do a little Zumba. I'm so slim and trim. If they could only see me now, kids. (laughs) The joy of radio. Oh, Oh my God. I'm skinny for radio. (laughs) Is there anything new this year that you're unveiling that you haven't? In years past, or well, the one piece that we're adding this year is our with our history exhibit that we had in place last year. This okay. year, we are bringing from the Stonewall Museum out of uh, Fort Lauderdale, Florida. We're bringing up a special uh, exhibit that they've put together on the history of the transgender community. And uh, while it doesn't have a Rochester specific focus, mm-hmm. it provides a really nice introduction looking at trans issues through time. Okay. And so that will be there augmenting the. Um, Rochester history exhibit. The, it's called Building Alliances. That was there last year, and we've added some new panels to it, so that will continue to be available for, uh, as well. Uh, Matt Haig, our city council member, is actually hosting the exhibit the, from the Stonewall Museum, okay. and I know he's uh, looking at trying to find a way to have it uh, on display in City Hall for the week after Pride as well, so keep tuned in for that. Oh, wow. Also, there's also the Latino Latina uh, Oral History Project, where uh, in the uh, exhibit itself, at on Friday night, there will be people telling their stories, and they'll be live, just talking about their experiences and coming out. And it's really important that we, you know, when we talk about diversity, that you recognize that various different commitments of different communities have been a part of the LGBTQ community in Rochester. Also on Saturday, we're going to be airing uh, Shoulders to Stand On. It'll be running constantly through a loop. It's a documentary about the gay rights movement. They're uh, Western New York for the past 40 years. Now let's talk. Okay. We've, we've been touching on what events are going to happen, but let's walk through it. So it starts on Friday. Right. Tell me what events that are paid events, what events are free events. Sure. And then 
Well, before the public even starts, I want to start with Friday, is that we're trying something new this year. We're actually turning the uh, setting up of the festival location into a social media event. So we have a team of folks who will be doing Instagram, um, uh, Facebook, Twitter messages all day long. So as the porta potties arrive, there'll be pictures going up online. Oh, nice. okay, as the vendors are pulling in, as the electricity oh, is put in. Oh, you got to go, you got to go. As, Can we get a flag in there, too? <laughs> as a way to show people yeah. and get them excited about this uh, and to see the work behind the scenes in order to host, you know, 4,000 people the next day. So that that will be happening all day beginning around 7 o'clock a.m. on Friday morning. And how do we follow you guys? How do we follow that? Boy, uh, the best way, just look at hashtag Rock Pride 2014. Okay. And Perfect. then from there, you can look, uh, follow the Twitter, the Facebook and other feeds from there. Okay, wonderful. And I'm then, still working on Facebook. Why do I got to worry about Twitter? <laughs> uh, Michael, I'm going to pass it off to you to talk about then uh, once the public starts coming in on Friday. Okay, on Friday we're going to start off at uh, 6 o'clock. We do our flag raising ceremony. We're going to have, at 6, we have an arrival of Rainbow Riders. Every year, one of our office workers, Jeannie, puts on Ride for Pride, and it's one of the biggest fundraisers that we have all year. And there's about... <laughs> 40 riders, and they come in in different colors, and they'll come down, and then what? we'll have them come off, and they'll speak a little bit and tell us, you know, what they've done. Where's the location, by the way? Sorry. Martin Luther King Square Park, These formerly are, okay. known formerly known as Manhattan Square Park. Yes. Yes. Then at 610, we're going to have the Pride Performance Ensemble, which is a color guard. Okay. They performed last year. They're going to be doing it again this year. It's about a two- to three-minute performance. Uh-huh. Really great. We're going to have some speakers like Matt Hag and Harry Bronson. Um, there'll be a poem. We've got some closing remarks. And then we're going to open up the History Pavilion afterwards from 7 to 9. And obviously we have other invited speakers, including the mayor and Anybody else that we can get? Do you want to come on down? Sure. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> so that's Friday night. It's all uh, down in Mar- Martin Luther King Square Park. Started with the flag free. raising at 6 o'clock. It's all, all free. Great. And the history Wonderful. exhibit and the Latino history project follows the speakers that evening. Okay. Then we start uh, Saturday. Um, the park opens at noon. Okay. Uh, from noon to 3, it's free. Family fun fest. Uh, music from the stage. Right. Um, the food vendors are there. Everything is going on. Let me give on. you a little, a little highlights of family free fun. When I say free, it's free. 100% free. Okay, we have Spirit is Christy, uh, which is a great choir. We have Zumba. That's what uh, Michael yeah. talked about earlier. We have the amazing and incredible Mambo Kings. We have a uh, mask contest for the kids to participate in. Uh-huh. Then we have the Barican Dance Theater. We saw them at the mayor's inauguration. I'm like, they are a must-have. So yeah, we brought them back and also featuring the band Unbound. And that's all family free and fun from 12 o'clock to 3.30. When's the parade? Does the parade start? Parade starts at 3 o'clock. Oh, okay. I knew this was coming. You want to talk about the parade, Scott? So the parade is on the other end of the city in some ways, starting uh, on Park Avenue down near uh, Berkeley is Lineup Street, right? Yep. And marches down Park Avenue to Alexander, up Alexander to East. Uh, on east, we cross the inner loop, and then it winds its way into Martin Luther King Square Park okay. from there. Um, generally, we have somewhere around 60 to 100 uh, units in the parade. Wow. Um, so uh, okay, lots of color, massive. lots of music, and uh, lots of fun all along Park Avenue. And the, the restaurants along Park Avenue get into it, too. They oftentimes will reserve the tables outside for special parties, um, have drink specials. Um, and people who live along Park will oftentimes throw picnics in their front yard and have people oh. in the balconies and porches watching and waving and uh, waving their rainbow flag. So it's a good time for all. Just, and there's even more. Uh-oh. There is, but I'm going to pause you just for one quick second. Now, how long have you guys individually been a part of this? The Gay Alliance has been part of the event for all of the years it's existed. Okay. We've hosted the picnic all 40 years. So now you have witnessed year after year. Do you sense that Rochester has always embraced it or now it's becoming more like, yeah, this is no big deal. This is just... Much, much like society itself, uh, LGBTQ issues uh, have gone somewhat mainstream. Yeah. And we definitely see that as, par- as far as pride celebrations go. Um, it used to be, you know, that really the only people who showed up were the LGBTQ folks and maybe a couple of friends or maybe a family member or two. At this point in time, everyone is welcome in the community. That must be I, I, the coolest I, feeling. It's really fun. That I mean, I like true. to tell people to release their inner gay for the weekend and just be yeah. fabulous. You know, <laughs> no matter who, you, who you're attracted to yeah. or what your true sexual orientation yeah. is, it doesn't matter. Um, this is all about about mm-hmm. love, about community, about uh, having pride in oneself, um, and feeling part of of 
something bigger. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. Yes. I didn't mean to interrupt. Oh, no. Um, but there's also even more, as we just said. The evening festival, which starts right after the parade, empties out into uh, Martin Luther MLK Jr. Park at Manhattan Square. That's a lot to say on yeah, radio. Yeah, it is. It is. <laughs> um, we're starting with the Rochester Gay Men's Chorus, the Women's Community Chorus, the mus- uh, JCC's musical Hairspray. Um, we have DJ Neil McLeod and DJ Paul DeLeon. Our headliner, Miss Darian Lake, uh, who's a... Uh, Unbelievable uh, drag queen and entertainer. And 98PXY is That's responsible right. for getting who? Who Who are we possibly getting? The person is Betty Who, of all who? names. Who? <laughs> who? That's who. Betty uh, whom? She, Betty to whom? To whom, brother? To no. whom are we looking, <laughs> Betty Who? <laughs> we, we turn to Betty Who, and we're really excited to have her uh, as our headliner. It's... Uh, the uh, if you get your tickets early, you can get them for ten dollars for the okay. evening festival at rochesterpride.com. If you get to the gate to buy your tickets, it'll be fifteen dollars. No the big gate. deal, though. Still, no, no, no big deal but, for the fun. So all, yeah. up to this point, everything is free, open to the right. public. Yes. And then this, and you know, at night you have to right. beginning at four really, o'clock the gate charge. And this is a fundraiser for the Gay Alliance of the right. Genesee Valley. It's not like so. We want people to buy their tickets early and often. Okay. Uh, yes. It sounds good. It's kind of like good. voting in Chicago, isn't it? <laughs> yes. And then there's even more. Michael, why don't you tell them about the fabulous picnic so on the next day? So then on Sunday we have the picnic. It's usually a little bit more of a relaxed environment than the festival. The festival, there's a lot going on. We have tons of vendors the music and all that. This is more... You come out, you kind of just relax. We are going to have food, entertainment. This year, we've got the Roundhouse, which we've had for about, since the whole thing has been going on. Uh, They play a lot of music, dancing, and stuff like this. But this year, we're bringing in the city's small stage. So we're going to have karaoke, and we're going to have a band, Radio Nation, which plays top 40 hits. And we're going to have some drag going on. So they'll be going on at the same time. There'll be a family fun event going on. We'll have, like, face painters and clowns and balloons and things like that. Oh, that's so awesome. We want everybody to come out for that. Uh, you can get in general admission is, if you buy prehand, is $10. Okay. That does not include food. $15 for food. Okay. The cost goes up by $5, so 15 at gate for just entry or 20 at gate. For, with, for food. For okay. food. Yep. And Scott, what else is going on that weekend? The other big thing that we have going on for the second year is the Rock Pride Games. And this is, a uh, again, only a two-year-old uh, part of Pride um, and uh, brings the health and wellness aspect into Pride. And so this year we have women's rugby going on over the course of the weekend. Mm-hmm. We have softball. We've got a an obstacle run that we're partnering with um, Hot Shots on, as well as being part of the Lollipalooza um, volleyball tournament that they host that weekend. So we'll have LGBT uh, athletes coming in from around the region to participate in those events. There's also the big roller derby event. Yeah, roller derby! Yeah. Awesome! Yeah. So we know that we uh, have fans of that here at PXY and Absolutely, other stations yeah. involved in the area, so we'd love to have folks there. Um, so Rock Pride Games is an important part of the weekend now. Oh, wonderful. Man, how did we do it? Stuff everything into 15 minutes. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> and then one weekend. One weekend and of one massive weekend. fun, and then we all get institutionalized on Monday morning. <laughs> right, right, right. The Unmask Your True Colors 2014 Rochester Pride. It's uh, July 18th to the 20th. It sounds amazing. So hopefully we'll see you out there. It's something for everyone. It's a big family event, as, as we just said. Um, minute by minute of what's going to happen um, next weekend. And thank you so much for coming thank in. You. Perfect. Thank you. Can we just remind people that yeah. our sponsors like Trillium Health and 98PXY that you can get your tickets at rochesterpride.com. Rochesterpride.com.